Omega's collaboration with the James Bond movie franchise is one of the most famous and impressive in the watch world. The latest collaboration, I think, is one of the greatest so far. The watch comes in the 42mm diameter Seamaster Professional watch case that has been there since around 2018. It is handmade from titanium, a metal that's specifically chosen by the current James Bond actor Daniel Craig, which makes this watch much lighter and stronger than stainless steel which definitely is more suitable for the activities which someone like Agent James Bond would find himself getting into. Omega and the James Bond movie have been together in collaboration since 1995, with the watchmaker providing Seamaster watches for the world's most famous cover agent, James Bond 007. For the ninth in this association movie, No Time to Die, Omega has made a special and toughly attractive new Seamaster 007 edition, the reference 210 90 42 20 01 001. The attention to detail starts on the dial, where we see more deviation from the average Seamaster diver's 300 meters. What's gone is the shiny ceramic bezel and ceramic wave dial, and its place is all matte everything. The bezel on this watch is made of aluminium, which Omega has confirmed will fade with age, allowing you to add your own patina along with already enough dose of retro look. You will also notice the awesome vintage inspired domed sapphire style to diver watches of 1950s and 1960s. The hour and minute hand are both pentagon shaped and partially skeletonized with big luminous triangles at their tips. The use of red on the end of the central seconds hand is a good visual mark to prove the wearer that the watch is running, as that hand runs around the dial. Also making this dial noticeable from that of other Seamasters is the arrow marker above 6 o'clock, used historically to emphasize the property of the British government. Tropical style is applied to the gradations on the bezel, and subsequently the hour markers. A nice touch is that Omega kept the dial free of any instructive 007 brandings. The Omega Mesh bracelet, which is without any doubts looking cool, works a bit like a strap, allowing for easy and quick adjustments. When it comes to the clasp, the brand chose a folding variation, which in combination with the bracelet itself made a large bulge under the wrist. The metal loops are thin but robust with a matte finish that echoes that of the case. The one nearest the pin buckle plays quite homage to Bond, with an engraved 007 logo. The buckle itself, also made of matte finished titanium, has a raised relief Omega Greek letter in the center. The strap is long and owners with thinner wrists will need to fold the end back in through the final loop to prevent it from dangling. Regarding the experience of wearing the reviewed Omega watch, did they feel like an Agent 007? Maybe, a little bit. Titanium case is a great choice. It is light and pleasantly sticks to the wrist. For myself, I would choose the variation with mesh bracelet rather than an auto strap. And it has nothing to do with the quality, but rather about personal preference for the bracelet form of wear rather than a strap one. The tropical brown color scheme of the bezel matches the dial which uses an array of large, geometrically shaped indexes, all coated with a generous application of Super Luminova. A Super Agent's watch needs a tough and reliable movement. An Omega Squaxel Mass Micrometer Calibre 8806, which beats inside this watch, delivers this successfully. Based on the Calibre 8800, but lacking that movement's date display, it is self-winding by means of a bidirectional rotor, magnetic resistant to 15,000 Gauss, and possesses full 60-hour power reserve, with a balance frequency of 25,200 vibrations per hour. The in-house movement includes 35 joules and uses silicone for its hairspring and free-sprung balance spring. Its titanium balance wheel is equipped with screws for fine adjustment. The watch includes rhodium plating and Geneva waves in arabesque cube, the latter a hallmark of Omega's in-house calibers on the plates and the rotor. Like all of Omega Master Chronometer movements, the Calibre 8806 has earned a certificate from the Swiss Institute of Metrology, METAS, for eight separate criteria. 
a testing a superlative precision and anti-magnetic properties. Ultimately, a watch is required to perform within a tolerance from 0 to plus 5 seconds per day during and after exposure to the 15,000 Gauss magnetic field in order to receive the master chronometer designation. The case is 42 mm in diameter by 40 mm thick in fully brushed grade 2 titanium. The lack of polished surfaces gives the watch an appropriately more rugged look than the standard Diver 300 m watch. The case is titanium also imbues a different grey hue rather than the stainless steel variation and likely results in the watch wearing better due to the reduced weight, perfect for a man on the go. Upon further examination of the case, you will find lots of well thought out details. The case of a titanium Seamaster 300 meters is slightly thinner than the regular steel model. Looking at the watch, you can see numerous refractions and reflections of the light. But it is thanks to this, among other things, the Seamaster 300 meters obtained the so-called vintage look and feel. Officially, the watch is water resistant to 300 meters. But as long as I know, the company tests watches in depth exceeding even 400 meters. When talking about diving, we must mention the rotating bezel. Its insert is made of aluminium, which thanks to a particular process is more durable and hard. Returning to the screen 5 years after, Spectre, the latest 007 edition, is a paired back remake of the classic Seamaster that departs from its dressier counterparts and instead harnesses a hard-working military-style approach. Both the bezel and the dial are crafted from anodized aluminium, a unique material in the modern age of ceramic everything, which is used specifically so that both will fade and age the way a vintage watch might. Unlike many previous Bond collaborations, this new Seamaster doesn't feature any obvious Bond brandings, save his agent number 007 engraved on the back case, and the broad arrow printed on the dial above 6 o'clock, a callback to the character's role as an agent of the British Ministry of Defense. While the price is certainly steep, a lot went into this watch. From concept to development, and it definitely earned its place among the ranks of the greatest Seamaster models ever. As a watch designed for divers, one of the major functions intended for the watch is water resistant. In order to ensure that this is met, a helium escape valve is located at the 10 o'clock mark on the case. This valve ensures that a balance is maintained between external and internal gas pressure when diving in a saturated environment. This prevents damage to the watch inner working mechanism, which naturally would have occurred if diving were to take place without this helium escape valve. Regardless of those facts, the 007 edition, in my opinion, is a very impressive watch. Everything feels solid and robust, just as we expect from a brand like Omega. We have seen many of the previous 007 editions, but believe me, this one by far is one of the best Bond Seamasters yet. It has a look and feel of a vintage timepiece. In the hand it feels lightweight, but on the wrist it perfectly has a solid presence. It is one of those watches that has to be seen on the wrist to be able to really appreciate its spirit. Do you think this is the best model of 007 so far? Please let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.